Hey, it's Biddy Penny. Welcome to my channel. Today I have a very playful video. I am playing with the new Dina Wakely release from Ranger and oh, I am in love. I am absolutely in love with this release and I am going to be showing you how I played with um stencils, stamps, transparencies, tissue paper, acrylic paint. This is very mixed media. I'm making four cards, but I'm showing so many techniques. So I hope you'll stick around and check it all out. This alpha set is awesome. If you're into scrapbooking, junk journaling, or card making, I could see it working for all the above. You'll get to see a card I made with it, um, using it to create my sentiment. Um, but yeah, I really love alpha stamps and all different sizes, all different fonts because of the customization that you can get. I accidentally bought two of the same stamp set. That was a bummer but that's okay. I know what to do with it. So, um, all is good, but yeah, to the beginning start of the show today are these transparencies. Now, this is something that I think, um, some people might struggle to work with, including myself in the past, but I've really been wanting to put more transparencies into my work, work with layers. And so I took the plunge and I got these. I did a bundle over at Ranger and um, I am in love with these transparencies, <laughs> you guys. Let me show you how I'm playing with them. I grabbed my craft grade acrylic ink. I mean, this is like Apple Barrel Arteza. It's all really basic um, craft acrylic paint. And I turned the transparencies over from how they came out of the package. I just assumed that the way that they were packaged, that the fronts were showing. And so I just flipped them over, assuming that that's the backs. With acrylic paint, I really don't think it matters, but I could see it mattering if you used alcohol ink or something like that. I don't know if the alcohol ink would lift the design off of the printed design that's on these transparencies off. I'd be really cautious with alcohol ink. You could try it. I would sample just a small little spot and see if it's lifting the design. Obviously, it's only going to lift on one side. So I'm just using a couple of colors here and painting up a whole sheet of faces. Now, at first, you can see here, I was avoiding like the eyes. I was kind of painting these um, in a detailed manner. But as I went along, I discovered that it was just so unnecessary to take that approach. And there's a couple of reasons why. One reason is that, well, all the details printed on the other side. So the backside might look like a hot mess, but when you flip it over, the beauty is amazing just because all the details are on the other side. And so I would find myself flipping it over frequently to kind of see what I was creating and how it was working out. With these tag images, I just um, kind of just really smeared some paint. I did splotches and I didn't try to fill in the whole thing. Um, I really wanted to work with layers, which I'm going to show you more ways to play with these transparencies. I also experimented with acrylic gouache. So gouache is basically opaque watercolor, always reactive. Acrylic gouache is opaque, very opaque, feels like watercolor, but when it dries, it dries like acrylic paint and it's permanent and it doesn't re-wet or reactivate. So this was gorgeous. This worked out perfectly. I didn't even need to mix this color. This is burnt sienna and I think it makes a gorgeous skin color, just skin tone straight out of the bottle. Um, so this is burnt sienna and here I also discovered that I can mix colors. So when you're doing this, you can see brush strokes depending on how you lay the paint down. But here you can also mix colors directly onto the acetate. So I'd pick up a little bit of 
uh, this real light pink and pale pink. And I just started kind of mixing my colors directly there. You, It's also nice. It's very forgiving because if you go over the lines or you do something you don't like, you can just wipe it off with a baby wipe or with your finger and start over. And I love that about it. Um, so yeah, I was able to just kind of deepen some of the faces and get different tones. Here is where I landed with mine. I love the way these came out. I love the colors and everything about them. Again, the back might look like a hot mess, but it's when you flip it over that you see the magic <laughs> of the transparencies. Now you can see here with the labels that I just did hit and miss color because I wanted to play with layering. So I got out this collage tissue paper from Dina as well. It's not from this release. It's from a past release. It was in my stash. And I am going to use this along with some matte medium. And matte medium, for those who don't know, comes in a lot of different textures. This is the very liquid version of matte medium. You could use Mod Podge. You could probably use your PVA. Um, you don't have to have matte medium, but maybe you already have it and need some inspiration of how to use it. And here is a case in point. When this dried, you could not see the glue at all. There was no hint of any glue. It just looked like these pieces were melded together, like they were made this way. Um, and I used a good amount of glue. Um, I used glue on the front and the back of this tissue. So why did I put the tissue down? Well, I mean, I thought, for one, the thing that makes me sometimes a bit nervous about using transparencies is wondering how they're going to adhere over time with different glues and things. And so I felt like if I layered the tissue on the back, one, I'm going for the layered effect, but two, I'll also be able to easily adhere these to any project using glue. Um, it'll hide my glue lines and um, it will provide an absorbent substrate for pieces to go together. Um, so yeah, I just played around with the tissue, bringing in different sheets. This was one that had, uh, just fonts and text, not anything you can read, nothing that there's no like words or anything. Now, when you're playing with this, you put your glue on the top of your design. So if this was a napkin, let's say you're using a decorative napkin, which you could totally use in this process, you put your glue on top and adhere that down because you're working from the back. Now, I also wanted to play with patterned paper. And this is where we're going to get a lot of, of a layering effect. So we have one layer of paint, one layer of tissue, and now we have this um, patterned paper. And that's basically going to give three layers here on this. Now this is still wet, um, cause I'm just flipping it over to show you, but I think there's a lot that could be explored here by using this technique. So I cut out all of these pieces and basically started using them as ephemera immediately. Um, this video was just going to be a technique video. I wasn't going to show you any um, makes. I wasn't going to make anything. I was just going to show you how different ideas of how to play with these transparencies. But to tell you the truth, I could not wait to play with them. I could not wait to put them to work on a project and play with them. I know that I'll be putting these in my paper playground journal for sure. Um, I've made four cards here in this video, which you'll see. I could just see them used in so many ways. It's fun that they're on transparencies because I was able to keep that little trio together. <laughs> that little cute trio stayed together. With these, I did cut one of these, just this one really, to the edges of the label, but the rest of them, I liked that tissue background. So I actually cut these out in a way that I could keep that tissue background. And here's one that has the layers 
of tissue, paint, and patterned paper. And I just love that. I think that is so fun and it's so promising and what it can deliver. Some of them I left plain, more plain like this. So whatever project I put it on will shine through, um, you know, and that is the beauty of a transparency. So now we're moving on to an abstract watercolor painting, basically. Uh, like I said at the beginning of the video, this this video is chocked full uh, of techniques and, um, yeah, basically techniques. <laughs> so uh, I used to do a lot of abstract paintings that actually used to be my go-to art for a number of years. I... Um, even got to do exhibits and display my art. I sold a lot of my abstract paintings. My family members have a lot of my paintings. And um, it was fun to kind of revisit that a little bit is how I felt when I was playing and making a background for my four cards. In fact, when I get done with this, it was kind of hard to cut it up. And I was wishing I had scanned it into my computer or something. But I decided to stay true to this process and not get caught up in nostalgia <laughs> by just keeping it uh, as one piece. So what I'm playing with here now are some granulating watercolors. Now, this is a palette that I built for myself. I did a lot of research with Daniel Smith watercolors. I went through all of his, he has so much information on his watercolors. And I built myself a granulating palette. So I bought these colors individually. I bought them based on their color and their granulation uh, possibilities. You know, the, the granulation um, element of the watercolor. So I'm playing with colors like... Um, I love cornacridone colors. So I'm, I am playing with some bright, vivid colors as well as some more that are more muted. Um, but together, I think they played really nicely. And then I brought in this color that my friend Rhonda had sent me. Um, and it's a different brand completely, but I really love it. And what I find definitely is that the more water you add into granulating colors, the more granulation you get. So if you just apply it here, like that block that I applied, you can get, especially with this one, a very opaque color. Um, but the more water you add into it, the more of the shifting and the granulation you'll get. So that color that I was just laying down that it looks like a navy blue almost it has a lot of green and purple it has some gorgeous colors in it that don't really present until you add more water um I think and I can't remember the color but that brown color was the most um had the most shift to it in a visual texture um which is what I really like about granulating colors is I like a visual texture that they have. Um, but I also am loving colors that shift. Uh, so I played a little more. I filled in a little more spaces. And then I thought this piece needed some contrast and I thought it needed more interest. And so I'm adding in just a few red... Um, lines um, thin and short and just adding in a few details when I was creating this background I had to think about it being cut into fours so these are going to go on to five by seven card bases this is a nine by twelve sheet of paper so I had to think of that I wasn't done this was a very experimental day for me which paid off. They don't always pay off, I have to say, but this one did. Here is where I'm going to use some of the stencils. I had these scraps of paper in my stash on my desk, and I have not played with these neon colors but once, and these are lunar paste. 
You can also get them on the Ranger website. Um, they're from Simon Hurley. He came up with Lunar Paste a couple of years ago now, and I really love them. They're, I think they're my favorite stencil butter. Um, although I love my light and fluffy from the crafters workshop. That white is my, is my white, but I do really love these. Um, they have a metallic sheen to them for one. Uh, they dry pretty quickly. I mean, again, I'm in a very humid area. It, like it's in my region where I live, it's always humid. Um, but these dry pretty quickly. You can build them up. You can um, thin them out, make them more transparent so they can be opaque or transparent. And that is pretty amazing from a medium because a lot of times mediums are one or the other. They can't be both necessarily. And I do like that these can be both. I got real experimental and just started dragging all the colors, trying to create kind of like a, a rainbow a little bit with these. And, um, that was fun. It can get muddy. Like after you've done this a few times, you'll have to clean off your brush and you will create mud when you start dragging all colors through each other. But just clean that off. Stop. Don't, don't drag the mud across your stencil because um, whatever is on the top is what's going to be visible. But I do like the way those turned out. It's a very busy, very wild background but we're just going to use it in pieces and parts. So next, <laughs> I am playing with the pocket squares. And yeah, I'm just loving that Dina did these little kind of portraits that come in squares and circles. Um, I think it's a fun alternative to the paper dolls, although I love them too. Um, but it's fun to have something like this where you can play with your color palette and you can make things. I mean, there's just things you can do with stamps you can't do with paper. And there's things you can do with paper you can't do with stamps. You know, it's nice to have versatility. Mary, one of my Marys, um, had asked me after my last watercoloring video, if I would watercolor with some pencils and I had, I'm glad she asked that. Thanks, Mary. Um, I had these Julie netting, um, colored pencils in my stash for a long time. They are basically supposed to be different skin tones. And I think I like to use pencils in small spaces, um, sometimes. And especially like if I'm not doing multiple colors, Oh, how I struggle with my water brushes sometimes. I have discovered that my favorite brand is Jane Davenport. Her water brushes never fail me. Everybody else's cause me problems. <laughs> uh, but anyways, yeah, so I just color it on like a colored pencil and then go over it with water and a brush and that's how I typically play with them. Now, let's get even, we can go further than just painting their faces, though. I'm actually going to use these same watercolor pencils and um, use it to color my backgrounds, just my edges, kind of adding a distressed color and a distressed look to these portraits. So that, you know, the sky's the limit. You can do anything with these little pencils and it doesn't have to be this brand. Tim Holtz has some. I haven't tried them yet because I can't really justify getting them when I have all of these. Although I would really love to have the Tim Holtz ones because I have all of his inks and then I could do real, you know, coordinated color wise. Uh, that would be the main reason I would get them. Um, but yeah, you can, you know, just color and the more water you add, the more you will dilute these just like anything else. Now, when your paper is still wet, what's fun about a watercolor pencil is here, I'm coming in with this black and I'm going to add like sketchy lines, sketchy details here. And if your paper is still wet and damp, 
those lines will stay. Even after you add water to them, those lines are going to stick around. Now, if you add a ton of water, not so much, but, um, and it depends on how hard you press on your paper. But I actually like that. That is a technique. It's, that you can use with watercolor pencils that you can't really do with just watercolor. Um, but because of the way the watercolor pigment lays down, you're able to actually go in and sketch and use them in a different way. So uh, that is definitely a bonus to uh, a watercolor pencil and a way to use them. So in these little examples, y'all saw that's all I used were my watercolor pencils and I was able to do these fun sketchy backgrounds as well as fill in the faces so I hope you enjoyed that little session so here's our wild and crazy paper we've got all these things that we've created now we've painted on transparencies we've made little ephemera with our stamps we've got a couple of backgrounds to work with this one with lunar paste and then we have the one with watercolor paper. Um, so I'm going to bring all of these elements together to create a few cards with you. Now, this was a process. This process took half a day um, for me just because I had to keep stepping away and coming back and I needed to let some things dry. And so it was definitely a process. Now, the first thing I did was I just kind of created some clusters and I used my stapler to attach things. And I just played with grouping these clusters together before I even started with the card design. Now, I was also thinking, <laughs> am I going to cut up that watercolor paper? <laughs> but I got the courage. Now, by the time that I start making my first card, this was on a Friday and it was time for craft roulette. So I turned on craft roulette and in the month of May, it's mothers and daughters, which I mean, how sweet is that? So mothers and daughters are coming together to craft and I, I just love it. Um, and so the first one up was Amanda Stevens and her daughter. And so I watched that episode and worked on these cards and worked on this video for you guys. Um, and so my first card that I made was for craft roulette. Now you can see here, I'm using foam tape and this is the beauty of painting these transparencies is now you can add them into your projects and you don't have to worry about is my glue going to show how am I going to adhere this down I don't like staples well don't worry about it you don't have to use staples <laughs> your glue doesn't have to show it just depends on how you treat the transparencies beforehand but I'm in that dilemma with you guys because I'm wanting to use some transparencies in lots of different ways and that is always I think the struggle for me too is determining like how will I adhere this to my project like yeah I would love to use some transparencies but how am I going to put it on um, so that is something I'm going to keep exploring with you guys here and we'll we'll discover that together but I definitely think by layering backing them painting them that that is certainly one way of hiding adhesive. <laughs> so yeah, I made a lot of clusters and then I kind of put things to the side. And then I thought I can turn these clusters into cards. Of course I can. So using some more of this wild paper very sparingly, I start putting some things together. Now, one of the things I wanted to put together is um, one that kind of looked like a name badge. So I can't remember all the parameters for Craft Roulette this last week, but it was something like, hello was the project. I'm really having to think here. Robust colors, workplace, and mixed media. I'm pretty sure that that's the order that they went in. 
And when Mary spun that wheel and those parameters came up, I was already doing this. I was watching the show. I was making this video and I was like, oh my gosh, Mr. Wheel just gave me a gift. Thank you, Mr. Wheel. Like I can make my craft roulette card <laughs> and not skip a beat. I've, I'm already making it. <laughs> So certainly um, the hello is what I will bring in with my alpha stamps. The um, colors that I'm using today are very robust, I think. Um, workplace, I ended up turning um, one of my little clusters into what I think kind of resembles a work badge, like you might wear at your place of employment. Um, and ours have to have photos on them, our security badges. And so, yeah, I was able to make it work. And then obviously this is like quintessential mixed media. So <laughs> I had that last random element in the bag. <laughs> I'm looking here and my goodness, was it hard to cut this paper? I, thought maybe I'll make two six by nine cards, which is what this paper is measuring at this point is six by nine. Um, a six by nine card is an A9 for those who are curious. And I do love them, but I got the courage and I cut it apart. And here we go. <laughs> two cards that are six by four and a half sorry, four cards that measure six by four and a half. All right, so now I have my clusters that I made and I'm just kind of arranging them here on these backgrounds. And I'm gonna have a couple that are horizontal and a couple that are portrait. It was hilarious how invested people were in craft roulettes and Mary's card her portrait or landscape dilemma became <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> You'll just have to go watch the episode to see. What I'm doing right now is I had run out of my faux vintage tape. So I take a silicone mat, I take scotch tape or any kind of transparent tape, I tear it off. And then as, as of late, I just use my alcohol markers and I color it up. And I do various colors of brown, but it doesn't have to be brown. You can make pink tape, purple tape, blue tape, red tape, any color tape you want. Um, but then once it dries, which it dries really quickly, I can put it directly onto my project. And it just looks like aged old vintage tape. And I love it. And I use it a lot. <laughs> so I have to make it a lot. All right. I am, it's pretty simple here. I've got a five by seven card base. I cut down my watercolor panel um, to six by four and a half. And that was just strategic to get all of the watercolor painting on there. And then I used the vintage tape and then I just glued my cluster on top and I added one of these sentiments. I love these so much. If I find more of these, <laughs> best believe I'm gonna be buying them. I really love having these sentiments and I added three to this card. So no, I'm not hoarding them. I'm using them. <laughs> I just love the way they look. And so this card is done. Here is another. And as I think about it, uh, because I was very much just in the process, this session for me, I don't know how enjoyable it is for you to watch, but for me, I felt so in my flow. I felt I was having the time of my life. This is the kind of stuff I love to do, um, to play, experiment, explore, to have a lot of freedom and whatever I'm creating. And so I just had so much fun. I am popping up all of my uh, clusters with cardboard, just recycled cardboard that I clutter my craft room with. <laughs> 
and it makes a great, uh, a great pop-up. Now, I loved this sentiment. This sentiment is actually what sent me over the edge to buy this stamp set, and it's the You Matter, which is what the stamp set is called. I think it's called You Matter, and um, it's something I could see myself giving my son, giving people in my life who need to know how much that they matter. Now, I'm going to use this wild background here on this card, and I cut it down so that it covers most of the card base. Uh, this is six and five eighths by four and five eighths, I believe. I think. I think that's what it is. That's kind of been my go-to measurement as of late for my backgrounds on my five by seven cards. These are very artsy, very mixed media. Um, I know they're not typical, but I am in a comfortable place with not being typical these days. Now, I don't think I recorded <laughs> me making my craft roulette card. I've talked about it a lot in this video and I made it before I made these three cards, but I don't think I was actually recording at the time but you'll get to see it here at the end of this video. So that one, I just glued everything flat down and used that You Matter stamp set again. I put this four and a half by six inch piece towards the top of the card, kind of like a Polaroid if you want to think about it in that way. And then I'm going to add... Um, a sentiment down below and I really like the way that that turned out as well here are my four cards so be authentic do your best <laughs> and you matter you all matter thank you so much for spending your time with me here today I know you could be anywhere but you're here hanging out with me here is my craft roulette card the name badge the hello and this is my goodbye I'll see you guys next time <laughs>